You're listening to uh, Trevor Francis on the Tilton Talk Show. Tilton Talk Show, all the keys keep right on. Tilton Talk Show, your views, your opinions, by the fans, for the fans. Welcome to the Talk Talk Show live on Facebook and recorded ready for tomorrow night at 8 o'clock on 107.5 FM and DAB Digital Radio and sponsored by Image Cleaning and this month in conjunction with the Lily Foundation. No win for Blues against an informed side hall so we'll write that one off and go again. Happy first Blues anniversary to Gary Monk and his staff and what a year it's been. And what a way to go again with a 12 o'clock kickoff and as full a house as is permitted. It'll be an early journey for me leaving home around 9 in the morning, if nothing else, just so I can park with all the road closures. Are you ready? Dare we dream? Can we put the 4-2 feet defeat behind us and really get stuck into them? Greasy G is back and I'm sure he'll get a lovely reception off the Blues faithful. Don't forget, let's make St Andrews one hell of a noisy cauldron from the off, no matter what. Stronger together. It's now all about Sunday, so as always, strap yourselves in and get ready for the ride on the world's only Tilt and Talk Show. We'll support you till the end of the day. Welcome to Monday Evenings Talk, talk Show 7.30 right the way through till 9 and of course on Switch FM 107.5 tomorrow at 8pm. Uh, greetings, Mr. Fon. Good evening. Are you in a good mood? Always right, in a okay. good mood. Uh, Mrs. Brown. Good evening. And special guest, Mr. Cash. Evening. Andrew Cash, ladies evening. and gentlemen. Andrew Cash. Your name's already up on the board, the board of fame, so there you go. Yeah. Um, Okay, Chris, uh, you got sent a message the other day which you asked me to read out right at the beginning of the show, and it goes like this. Good morning, Chris. I've been a Blues fan since 1968. I was looking forward to coming down to the Blackburn Rovers home game last Saturday week when Linda, my wife, took very ill and passed away on the 21st of February. She was my world, and she supported the blue side of Glasgow. That's where I've been for over 34 years. I always try and make a few home games every season, as the Blues are very close to my heart. It would be absolutely lovely if you could mention my Linda during the best radio show, the Tilt and Talk Show. If you can, this would mean no end and cheer me up and my family. Regards, Dermot Kiernan. Keep right on. Dermot, thoughts are with you, my friend, uh, from everybody here at the Tilt Talk Show, and I'm sure all of the wider audience as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's hope let's hope there are... She's smiling down on on St Andrews on Sunday to oh, give to see. give Dermot something to to smile about. Certainly, certainly. Uh, okay, so we will kick off with the whole game then. Uh, no points, no point, nothing, 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 nothing. Uh, um, yeah, um, Andrew went. You'll be somebody in our midst went to the game, eh? <laughs> um, you know, he'll be able to give a, a a better account of it than I will. But um, yeah, from you know, from what what I saw, what I read. Um, it looked like we were just a little bit leggy, and yeah. and they were they were a little bit fresher than us. Yeah, I think so. Um, <coughs> just didn't really turn up first half. I think I was quite glad to go in at one nil. Actually, I thought they had two or three kind of very good chances. So you know, it could have been a repeat of last season. Actually, yeah, when you think about it. But um, we had some half chances, but nothing really of, of real note. And they mm. seemed to kind of tear us apart a bit down down our right. So Kalan was kind of chasing okay, shadows yeah. quite a bit. Um, who was on the right hand side of midfield was it Mahoney or Marabte uh, Mahoney no Marabte I think Marabte, yeah okay. but we just kind of just yeah we just weren't at it really and yeah. as I say we kind of I would have taken a draw anyway at the start but yeah, yeah we just it's just. I think about it when you, when you consider the, like your, the point you made there we lost 6-1 last season there yeah, yeah. With, with not a 
ridiculously dissimilar squad available yeah. to us, then you know, expectation wise, I know you know we're a different side this year than we were last year, but expectation wise, it is a tough place to go. We haven't got the best record there, um, and you know they've got a couple of players who are you know in seriously good form in in Bowen and Pew, and um, you know Bowen got the goals. Probably won't be at Hall next season. Almost certainly a Premier League player next season. So, um, you know, it, it goes to show every every team in this division has, has got players capable of hurting you. Um, mm. And you have to be, you know, a side like us. We have to be at our near our best every game to get something. And unfortunately, we weren't on on Saturday. And we're not always going to be though, are we? You know, we're no. going to we're going to have bad days at the office from now and again. And let's just hope it doesn't uh, go into next Sunday. You know, we can turn it around. Um, lots and lots and lots of noise at St Andrews and yeah. you know outcome then teams you know the flames going up and there's something with the clappers on the seat I don't think I don't, <laughs> I, I don't think there'll be clappers on the seats but um, no I think <coughs> we had we clappers yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think somebody did yeah um, but obviously we had the we had the Blackburn game which you know, we, we put a lot of effort into you know trying to trying to stop Blackburn yes. getting back into that and then getting getting the equaliser light yes. on um, and then obviously the Bristol game on the Tuesday as well, which we yeah. put you know a hell of a lot of effort into the Bristol game as well. Um, you know, two uh, 0 up, and then they score with twenty five minutes to go or something, and you know, you're off, yeah. you're hanging on, fighting for your lives, putting a lot of energy into that, and you know it's a, a squad that you you mentioned earlier, Andrew, that doesn't change very often. Yeah, um, it's tough to go again and again and again in this division. Yeah, actually, I'm not. As you probably know, anyone that's read my comments on here before, I'm not like Camp's <coughs> favourite person. Mm. But I thought he actually kept us in the game first half. No, at all, yeah. he's a bother, isn't he, Camp? He's a bother. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's not. Like, no, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. Like, okay. Like, let's not let's not have a pop at Bovril here. Yeah? Right. Sorry, I got the wrong one. Because Bovril is loved by everybody. Bovril is universally adored by everybody. Right, of course, of the okay. products now to be available. Yeah, not not stores. better than Bovril, though. <laughs> but um, you know, yeah. You know, and yeah. I think he made he made a couple of decent saves. Yeah, he made a few decent saves, and as I say, it could have been it could have been, even three or four. I think half time, in which yeah. case it would have been damage limitation. And then obviously mm-hmm. going into Sunday, potentially on the back of such a big defeat again, like we had last season, could have been you know disaster yeah. really, yes. especially with them over the road winning four 0 So yeah, I think actually all in all, left the ground two now. I was kind of I wasn't really that disappointed because I. I just didn't think we deserved it is anything what it out is. of the game. Attitude, you know, sometimes, really, yeah. obviously, you know, with Blues, you go, like the Swansea game at home. and well, you don't disappoint. You've got a BMW to drive home in for crying out loud. <laughs> you know what I mean? People try my Sharaban. <laughs> but, yeah, so it's kind the of... The fell out on the way here once. In the, oh, yeah. <laughs> the beast from the east. <laughs> the car's going to get stolen now. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be me. Then, Nobody doesn't. knows where the studio is. Yeah, don't worry. Yeah, yeah. But, no, it was... Uh, yeah. it was it was one of those games that you just kind of like you say you've got to write it off and then yeah. if we win next week then no, but nobody's no worried about hot losing a hole if we beat them next yeah. week so, yeah. Yeah. yeah definitely hmm. thanks ever so much for the, all those people who have put rest in peace Linda and Little Barts and, and the kind words there thanks ever so much it does mean a lot and I'm sure it will mean a lot don't um, somebody's just asked if uh, Colin will be ready for the weekend from what I've heard on the radio the answer to that is probably going to be no the hamstring wasn't it hamstring yeah he seemed to be like holding that and like limping off but then Monk said after the game that it was just a twinge and obviously he hadn't pulled it he just right. felt a twinge so yeah but you've got to be so careful once you've done that yeah. because it's, yeah. it's vulnerable for a week or two isn't it I mean you know it's, it's the it sounds like it was the right decision to bring him off yeah. um, you know you, you don't want to take any risks and, and he's out for the rest of the season no. um, so yeah if he's if he's fit he, if he you know he plays probably um, if he's not fit well, so Harding comes yeah. in and He's got the chance to play against Villa, which you know I'm sure he'll relish at home at St Andrews. Mm. Uh, like Mike Hansen said, we've had three tough away games and won two of them, to be frank. So that's you know it is good. It's positive news, isn't it? Really, you're yeah. Not, you're not going to win every game. We're not. We're not. We're not. We're Birmingham no, no. City. We're not going to win every game. Um, you know, and um, Hull in form. You know, I think like, they've been a bit hit and miss. I was talking <coughs> to the steward before the game there, and he sort of said that they were obviously they got beat five one at Brentford, at Brentford last yeah, Saturday, yeah. and then. They beat Millwall, I think two yeah. two one was it? Yeah. And he said that they were quite lucky then. So after hearing that from him, I was I was a bit more optimistic. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Yeah. we yeah. haven't really. Uh, and Lindsay Phillips also said, in my opinion, Camp had a good game on Saturday. Did yeah. So mm. you know, you, you'll let a howler in and he'll keep you in a game. That's what I said all season. He's, what he is. He is yeah, what he is. He's by far and he's the champion. By no means, no, he's not. <laughs> he's he's uh, 
he's by no means the greatest keeper in the division. <coughs> um, I don't think he's the worst keeper in the division. He is what he is, and you know, let's hope that uh, he'll slightly slow off the mark for the for the penalty. For the I thought a little bit slow off that line, considering yeah. the distance. Bowen, Bowen the thing is those one on ones. <coughs> you know, I think you've seen goalkeepers bring people down like that all the time. I mean, yeah, it's not, I wasn't yeah. too. I wasn't like shouting. What the hell, you know? <laughs> yeah, I'm, you know, which you would expect from someone that isn't his greatest fan. But I yeah. wasn't really because I think he did play well in the first half. And I think, I think it's good that you admit that you're not his greatest fan. Yeah, right? okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, but at least that's at least you putting your honesty side to it. To me, if he puts a blue shirt on, he's a Blues player. That's Absolutely, it. And, yeah. and, and I'm, I'm behind him 100. percent No matter. You've what. got to be behind him. Still signing Lee Camp in the middle of our goal. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Even even enjoy it when he's playing. I didn't want him to. You had his photograph taken with you. I didn't want him to give the ball away. You had a selfie with him with a simple five yard pass just happens I have I proof want him to do it I have proof you have a selfie with him but you know yeah uh, Kevin French we all seem to follow a bad day at the office with a performance next game let's hope so let's yeah hope that, so. That, 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 to be fair that has been a trait uh, certainly under Monk um, you know Andrew mentioned earlier a year to the day since he was appointed which is, seems crazy yeah. you know you, you couldn't imagine him not in the dugout at the moment yeah, for us yeah. um, <coughs> you know so it, it, that has been a an underlying theme. It, it, well, I haven't checked the stats out, but it certainly feels like whenever we've had a disappointing one, at least you know we've come back the result again. might not have been right, but the, yeah, the yeah. effort and mm. the performance was there in the next game, and mm. that's all you can ask for in a derby, isn't it? Absolutely. Steve Trouton up the Blues from Somerset. Welcome to you, sir. Thank you very much for tuning into the Tilt and Talk Show. And Gary Shepherd Davis was poor, didn't look fit, and Craig Gardner is a liability. Well, there's every chance of God might 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 play, might, play, might well, start. Yeah. I'll, was Davis did Davis come off was poor to be honest. on the arrow did he come off yeah, I mean he's had a long time out, though, hasn't he he has had a long time out. he hasn't played at all this season yeah. his first start yes, this season was, yeah. yeah he did look uh, like he was sort of chasing shadows he, he's, it's just his first touch was a bit poor as well considering mm. I mean he's not the most skillful of players yeah. that, you yeah. know, he's not the most skillful player that we've got but seems to like to be a bit kind of his first touch was heavy and you know, any sort of passes he play, played were kind of going astray. So yeah. I don't know whether it's just mentally. That well, whether he just... starts or comes on next Sunday, he's going to remember that goal he scored the other year. And, oh yeah, uh, yeah. and uh, he's going to give it all. Yeah. Uh, Barry Palmer, yeah. any truth in the Blues players being kept awake by a samba party in the hotel till six oh, a.m. Yeah. on Saturday? If that is the case, and I have heard it, yeah. how ridiculous! Really? But it, do you know what? This kind of thing happens week in. It's a regular event if you go in the continent. You know, there's. People, let, opposition fans, letting off fireworks at three o'clock in the morning and setting fire alarms off, so the players like, yeah, it's a, it is a regular occurrence on the continent. Not something that happens more, more, you know, in, in England, but yeah, it's, you know, it, obviously it doesn't help help the uh, the preparation and you know the the players to be in the best mindset and things like that. But if that was the case, then you know, I, I've heard that I didn't know it was that, but I've heard there was. There was hotel issues, yeah. But mm. and Lindsay also said that the ref was a bit rubbish. Didn't really. I mean, like, <coughs> obviously, we're used to referees not being great. That's true. But I actually thought first. I'm not trying to go against ref. No, no, yeah, no, no. Yeah, I actually thought the first half he wasn't actually that bad. I think it was a penalty. Yeah. And I didn't in, his decisions didn't influence the result of the game? I don't, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't remember like thinking. Like that's a that's a shocking decision. Yeah. Like we get like we get at St Andrews quite a lot. Where yeah. you're that thinking the referees actually yeah, used yeah. to. I don't remember thinking that. So no, yeah, I'm not sure on that yeah. one. To be honest, I think as as long as as long as you can come out and say you know without um, VAR the referees aren't going to get every single decision no, right. Of course not. Um, uh, if you could come away from the game saying the referee hasn't altered the outcome of the game, then yeah. you know little decisions here and there are frustrating, but. Yeah, I think you take it with a And my bad if I said Gary Gardner, I meant Craig Gardner. Yeah, Sorry, not Gary. Gary's Gary's not available, yeah. Gary yeah. can't play, so my bad on that one. Yeah. Slip of the Freudian tongue, yeah. you know what I mean? It's a difficult one, isn't it? Because I think um, Davis obviously has got a fitness issue and I've been out so long within Gardner. Obviously, when he played at Miller Park, he was kind of, he was kind of a yeah, bit of a liability a a as well. Yeah. So he, yeah. he's kind of, I said someone on the radio yeah. earlier, saying he's a bit of a toss of the coin because I just... I think whichever way he goes, it's not really going to make yeah. too much of a difference. And it's, in, and it's mm. interesting. If it was me, he's not going to go this way. And and part of me, part of me says don't do it because you're almost 
giving them you're almost having fun there psychologically you're almost giving the opposition a little bit of a lift straight away yeah yeah but if it was me I would be working on uh, five man midfield five man midfield yeah I think I would uh, I would be going four four okay, one let's, I go, would, let's, go, let's go for the whole team then well you got camping, camping goal, goal yeah. and then either Colin or Colin or Harding depending on Colin's fitness yeah Dean Morrison Pedersen and I would I would go Magoma left yep Marabti right yep um, I would go Kifton Beld uh, it is a toss of the coin mm. fitness wise mm. I'd say Craig this might be your last game as a, in a uh, last derby as a Blues player <coughs> go and make it memorable I'd play Craig and I'd play Hotter behind Che right okay no Duke no Duke Duke on the bench yeah okay cool They've got a few. You. Well, yeah. I mean, they've got they had uh, an injury, didn't they? They've got defensive issues, so. and um, you know, I think I think I think their defence will is likely to be Mings and probably Courtney House yeah. at centre back, um, and and I just think I just think those those sort those two centre halves, those sorts of players will relish an aerial battle with Juki. Mm, mm. I don't think either of them will relish chasing Che down the line. Don't you think this and, and coming would have out, a, a, a score to Yeah, settle? well that was my other theory, you know, bring Vassell on for Hotter, but I just <coughs> maybe I'm harping back to um which game was it where we in, introduced the the diamond and Hotter was picking the ball up? It was QPR. Was it? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah they were certainly away from home QPR, yeah. and we were four 0 up after mm. stupid minutes. Um, so both sides in the Midlands can be four 0 up after forty odd minutes. By the way, um, well said. <laughs> but you know, you know, but I, I just I, I like the idea of Che being able to run the channels yep. to cause some problems, mm. and in doing so, Hotter dropping deep. Hopefully, you know that that might give us a little bit more, you know, pull them out of shape a little bit more. Um, I don't. This is by no stretch of the imagination what I think he'll do. I'm I'm almost certain he'll go Duke and Chow up front because yeah, that that's that's the way. That's what he's trusted all season mm-hmm. and it's worked for him all season. You know, bar the odd game or two, but that's that's sort of the route I'd go down mm. uh, Kev Kelly says Camp is officially the sixth best keeper in the championship according to the stats from the EFL which is not a bad don't like stats <laughs> <laughs> stats put me off football <laughs> the stats of stats are Villa haven't beaten us at home since 2000 <clears throat> and uh, going back to oh, go, going back like to the issues one. in the hotel Barry Palmer says perhaps we could find out which MC, or YMCA the Villa are staying on Saturday night <laughs> <laughs> and go, and go away. Barry well done beautiful beautiful <laughs> yeah. uh, Liam Carroll Dutch Mike is going to rock the Greedy's boat Sunday let's hope so well do you know what? if there's one thing I mean it's so unpredictable derby games all you know all the time if there's one thing that I would urge people to put your money on it's a Kifton Bell yellow card <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. a, it's the it's the <coughs> certain thing to come out of that game but. and Paul Gill says agreed Chris 4-5-1 to start and contain them to start with but uh, look with them winning the, not just them winning on Saturday but the manner of that win yeah, yeah. and the whole euphoria that comes with an Aston Villa win you know one winning God knows how long but all of a sudden one they're the, team. the greatest team in, in the world again and they're going to yeah, get yeah. them but you're looking at the table they're, they're six points off the playoffs but you look at average points how many points roughly it takes to get into the playoffs you're looking at early to mid 70s to mm. get into the playoffs to do that they've got to win eight or nine of the remaining games you know for me so mm. they have they have to approach every game mm. to, as though they're going to win it now but if we I go toe to toe with them <coughs> their players are better than us on the ball if we go toe to toe with them they they will outscore us as they did at Villa Park you know, and, I, and I think that could be the case again so I, I don't think it's a negative step you know four five one rather than four four two people see it as a backward step a negative step i don't i don't necessarily see it as that you know there's more more than one way to skin a cat um hotter playing in in an advanced role i don't see that as a backward step a negative step but okay. but again i don't think you will do that i'm Your pretty sure andrew andrew yeah, that's big one it? <laughs> <laughs> says my name under there <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Of what in terms of what we would, yeah, yeah, how we approach it. 
Yeah, I think he's. I think, like you say, that he's unlikely to change. Yeah, I'll, change it like that, yeah. isn't he? Um, I think he, he probably is going to go uh, Duke and um, Adams up front, and uh, hopefully with their defensive potential defensive frailties, then you know th- they'll have a field day. But then obviously, you know, this is a local derby, and it's. I I, I think it's going to be tight. I think like, if you look at the last sort of home games we've had against Villa, there's a couple of nil nils and mm. one all draw in there. And as I say, I looked at the stats earlier; they haven't beaten us in the last three league home games. Um, they haven't beaten us since 2009. We obviously beat them in the cup since then. Yeah. So it's not as if they're coming into it. I know they've got a good record against us of late and they've won a lot of games, especially at their place. And, you know, I'm, I dread to think how many games it is since we beat them in the league. But yeah. I don't think it's just, you know, a lot of Villa fans, I think, I th- when, I, when I saw the score on Saturday 4-0, I thought, if anything, it might, I know I might be clutching the straws here, but yeah. if anything, it might make them a little bit more overconfident than they should be. Yeah, you know, yeah. I know a lot of the Villa fans are saying, oh, you know, we're just going to turn up now and give you a good idea. But football doesn't really work like that. And, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm hoping they've got a lot of goals out of the system. Yeah. And, um, you know, like that famous 3-0 at home when we got back into the Premier League, obviously Bruce mentioned that they were overconfident and they thought they just had to turn up and they were just going to walk it. I know it's not the same, but I'm clutching at straws, I know, but I think... Yeah. Hopefully they're going to come into it thinking it's just a case of turning up. In you know, in which case they might have a bit of a surprise. Hmm. The one thing you can say for certain is that we'll be competitive. Absolutely. You know, a guy I know who's a Villa season to gold. I said Derby were the most uncompetitive side. You see, they've they've got ridiculous amount of injuries, certainly in midfield. But you know, they they didn't lay a glove on on Villa in the whole of the first half, hmm. and and we won't do that. You know, that won't be. That won't be us. If we haven't got the ball, we'll make sure that they get their, you know, as as damned as possible. They're not coming near our goal with it. But mm. uh, somebody did ask a few minutes ago, whereabouts are you sitting? Me, GM upper. Same. GM upper. Yeah. Season ticket seat. Same. Tilton corner. Mm-hmm. Chris. Block oh, six. He's got his headphones on. <laughs> <laughs> you won't answer you then. <laughs> Uh, Mings will try and cripple Chase and need Dukey to look after him from Mark Adams. He can yeah. be a little, uh, he can be a little feisty, can't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah obviously. You know, he's he's had his uh, well publicised, you know, thing with uh, Oliveira at Reading earlier this season. But um, yeah, yeah, but he, I'm sure they'll be looking at at Chay and saying we've we've got to stop him at, at all costs because. Yeah. You know, he is our he is our linchpin. He is our our main threat in front of goal. And Paul Smith will go with the diamond, and uh, Jack the something needs smashing in the first five minutes. Hmm. I'm sure he will, um, and I'm sure he'll want it because that's what he does. That's how he plays football. For for all the you know technically very good volleys he scores once a season. You know he's. His main role in that team is to win and buy cheap free kicks. Yeah. So I'm sure he will absolutely relish getting cl- clattered by hmm. Kifton Bell because you know the the yellow card will probably come out sooner rather than later, which is their game plan. But we'll see. Yeah, and Ray BCFC Pity Hutton is out. I bet Vassal was relishing coming face to face with him. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. Hmm, Stephen Rice, even gents, big, big game on Sunday. Come on, Blues. There we go. And, um, yeah. Let them worry about us. Don't change our system. Keep right on from Barry Palmer. It's Barry going, Palmer show tonight. Going very fast. It's going very fast. Yes, sir. I'm no, it's okay. I was going to say what you uh, just said. All right. You were going to say what I just said. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm your puppet. Do, 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 do. <laughs> create some noise that's what we need to do we need to make that place hostile it will be as Mr Fon says they spit abroad no I'm doing that yeah I'm not doing that they do spit abroad I'm not spitting from my pet hate row 30 because I don't think I'll be able to make it (laughs) it's my my absolute pet hate I detest it I detest it with an absolute passion but you can make it hostile and you can make it loud and you can make it a little bit anxious for them without you know, causing problems to the club by throwing things on the pitch or whatever. But no, um, please don't do that. You please know. don't do that. Please don't. But uh, yeah, definitely give them give them absolute pelters. Call them 
all the names under the sun that you wouldn't even dare bring up in front of your mother-in-law and and go hell for leather at them. Mm, mm. Uh, Andrew, uh, sorry, Mark Andrew Adams, can we have gas masks on the chairs instead of clappers? <laughs> <coughs> love it, love good sense of humour, me. And oh, good good point here from. But oh, God, I wish this wouldn't go so fast. Where, who's it from? Where's your glasses? It's not my glasses. It, it's just every time somebody types, it flicks up and down. I can't uh, can't get it under control. Uh, why should we fear a team below us? From Paul Hipkiss. It's not. It's not about it's fearing. It's a championship, isn't it? It's not about fearing them. I'm not. I'm not. You know. I'm not saying we're running scared of them because they've won a game four 0 You know. It's. It's planning our best way to to get a result against them yeah, yeah. and. You know, we, we've 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 said it's it's almost a, a pointless discussion to have because I'm ninety eight percent certain it'll be um, two wide men, Kiftebeld and probably Gardner, uh, and it'll be Duke and Adams. Mm. That that you know, I'm ninety eight percent certain that that's what the team will be. Um, you know, it's just a a theory, a, a different way, and I, that I think that's what they'll be expecting. So maybe it's just a little bit of a a tweak. Um, to give us a boost, yeah. And John Buchanan is asking, "Will Grealish be wearing shin pads?" <laughs> They'll be low. His socks will be low, and he'll be strutting around the pitch with his slick back hair, yeah. and he'll be falling to the ground every two minutes to try and win free kicks. And he'll win them. And he'll win them oh. because that's what his game is. Yeah. yeah. And Kev Kelly, I want us to be competitive, but we've got to be cute and not lose players to yellow cards and even a red. Mm. Yeah, I can see three or four. <laughs> and. and, and and actually, um, McGinn is back for them as well from suspension, and um, you know whatever you, whatever people think of of Grealish, I think McGinn has probably been their player of the season so far. Um, he was missing uh, at the Villa Park game, um, <clears throat> but you know if if we're going around kicking lumps out of Grealish and trying to put two or three men on him, that leaves a lot of room for someone like John McGinn, and yeah, he's a very yeah, good player yeah, technically. Yeah. So mm. you know, let's not. Let's not get overawed by the fact that Jack Grealish has come in. Um, you know, let's let's execute our game plan and 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 plan to stop every one of their diff- dangerous individuals. Love your message, this one, Lindsay Phillips. Looking forward to it. My dad's coming down. Can't go to many games anymore due to his health. Three generations with my son too. Beautiful. It's the game beautiful. to go to then. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Yes. Oh, by the way, Lindsay, I'll get your prize off tomorrow. I didn't have time today. Sorry. And another didn't thing, you, didn't you write out yesterday? All prizes will be posted out today. Oh, they, they were except for Lindsay's. Oh, right, yeah. okay. So, so not all, all, yeah, all, yeah, all but yeah, one. except for Lindsay's. <laughs> oh, I, I have to take pennies as well. I don't forget. Pardon? I have to take pennies as well. I took it. You've done it. Well, I've, I've, yeah. Job done. I've, nice just, I've just said all prizes have gone out mm. except Lindsay's. Mm. Uh, right, price. Now this is a bit of contentious. Mm. Uh, what? Well, take mini cabbages. Brussels sprouts. <laughs> now, come no, on. Please, no. It's I'm no expert. On the Hang on. I'm no expert. <laughs> Brussels sprout is not <coughs> in your cabbage. Oh, we could have started a new bite here. It's definitely not a, a cabbage, is it? No. No, okay. Surely not. Come on, mate. I'm no expert, obviously. No, I, neither am I. No, but no. I would be stunned if that was the truth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Paul Gill, have they announced the ref for Sunday <laughs> yet? Oh, I haven't seen. I have not seen no. any uh, official no. announcement, no. But he's going to have to be strong. Um, and he's going to have to watch out for that nonsense. Yeah. Um, yeah. And hopefully, you know, he won't be he won't be overly fussy, overly picky because that disrupts the flow. And you know, what what you want is a is a you know, which will help the atmosphere. You want a fr- you want an open game. You want a fr- obviously not ridiculously open. You shoot, we shoot because yeah, that's yeah. not good for the heart, right? But um, you know, not. A niggly foul every 30 seconds and play being broken up because that doesn't help the atmosphere but. Mm. and as Ian Clayton says got to take it to him from the start every team that plays them takes it to him and that takes it to him they leak more goals than my toilet no, I don't know what you're doing you to <laughs> you're surprised if it's leaking goals but yeah I get the uh, I get the answer <coughs> there, yeah uh, Liam Carroll Villa keep going to do an Enkelman that would be funny oh, I remember that do you remember that one moment Absolutely. where was you uh, I was in the lower Gilmerick. I would, I'd just, I'd just uh, driven back from the airport. I'd just come back from Florida. Oh, so I managed to just get in the pub just as it happened. <laughs> yeah, I was at that one. Yeah, it was uh, very memorable. That game, was incredible. That was. And I don't care if you touched it or not. I've watched no. it again today. <laughs> I've watched the um, 
uh, Carling Cup final today, the semi final, yeah. uh, the quarter final. Don't you work? <laughs> yeah, but I was at working on the sun's house and they got the clip video clips on. Oh. So oh, like a coffee and fag time, you know what I mean? You can sit there and, and I take don't know what that is. Long, long, just, I work diligently throughout the day. A lot of coffee and fags, isn't it? If you watch the whole game. I know, yeah. <laughs> you watch four football matches there. Yeah. Uh, Kevin Kelly's going to take a hog's head to the game in my lunchbox to throw a greenish on the corner flag. Yeah, oh, option. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Someone's oh, dear. asked how many, uh, how many of the Villa fans got, how many seats they got. Hit two thousand one hundred and sixty, yeah. something like. That. I think I think it's less than what we had at their place, but obviously, okay. I think um, yeah. Back to I think what the what the uh, WMP were saying last week the the netting um, and the extra allocation. I think we've extra two thousand eight hundred tickets we've got yeah, yeah. based on the the segregation differences that they're doing That's this good. season. But I think they've only got about two thousand one hundred ish. Yeah. Mm. Uh, don't forget all you've got to do to be in with a prize of next week's competition is share this on your personal Facebook page please don't share it to any other pages or groups as it gets bounced off just share it to your own personal Facebook page and you will be in the draw for next week's competition thank you very much which I should draw later very much. what time are you leaving home Sunday? <laughs> um, well now I'm not a big drinker let's put this out there but um, yeah. Um, but my brother is coming, and my mate who lives in London, Tom, is coming. Um, and the earliest train from Redditch was nine o'clock, I think. And we've decided that that's far too late. We want to be drinking before then, so we're gonna get a lift into town for about eight, half eight, eight, I think. eight thirty. And where are you drinking? Uh, Hen- I hear Hennessy's is open if somebody can confirm yes, that um, open yes so so. yeah so there will be options for us All loads of options. before making our way down mm-hmm. uh, Alan Wilkes after the big derby comes a smaller one uh, a few games after against the baggies any news on when tickets go on sale no um, they're already on, on sale. Keep on social. I like for West Brom. Yeah, they're already on sale. I think they went on for goal, sale for goal members last week. They were. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm waiting till Wednesday to see whether I can get one. Okay. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's staggered, isn't it? But they are they are on sale. So some have obviously yeah. already gone. It just depends how many get through to <clears> to uh, season tickets yeah. and things. Yeah. yeah. And Adrian Hill saying 2150. Yeah. Oh, that's right there. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Hello from Sunny Meriden. If it's sunshine near Meriden, I hope it's the Meriden somewhere near Florida to be both most of it's pitch dark outside of Meriden's only six <laughs> mile up the road. <laughs> um, Ray Hobro will be at the back of the Ray Hobro main stand in and around bar eight from nine a.m. Buy everybody a drink because it's his stand. Obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See, it's his stand. It's yeah. his. It's yeah. his. Patch. He can do what he likes. The, and... the least he could do is offer to buy everybody a drink. Obviously, obviously. Mm. Right. Mm. Well, five past eight already. Any update from the ladies this week, sir? Uh, no. So it's been quite international break. Yeah. Um, England have played two games. Um, Ellen White scored in the first one <clears> in a two-one <throat> win over Brazil, and then there was a two-two draw with USA. Um, but yeah, nothing, no, no games to speak of. Um, our um, conditioning, strength and conditioning coach, um, Carl Green, has been confirmed that he's going over to Orlando with Mark, mm-hmm. which was pretty commonly known, um, not publicly, but you know, widely rumoured that that was going to happen. Um, and I think the, the club put an uh, advert uh, in their jobs thing, on, on the website for a new general manager so it looks like Heather Cowan is leaving her position as general manager as well Ooh. okay so mm. um, watch that's the where space. I'll leave <clears throat> it watch the space Barry Palmer do the panel think or oh, the panel oh we're a panel now oh. we're planks not panels yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been called worse yeah. <laughs> yeah. do the panel think it's time uh, we have the Gil Merrick's at our stand and stick their way fans in the east paddock more noise and more noses. <clears throat> I think it's yes. I think logistically we've got it's a yes. Not, it's not. It's not. Yeah. Well, we've obviously you've had West Midlands Police in, and it's not mm. going to happen, is it? Because no, of the no, 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 the no, way. No. But yeah, would you want them to be possibly? Yeah. But I mean, 
I was t- talking to my nephew I went to the game with on Saturday. He's 17, and obviously I remember when I first went, the away fans were in the Tilton. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, obviously, I just can't understand now why that ever was a thing. No. Having the away it's fans weird, in, isn't in, it? Yeah. The, 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 the stand mm. yeah. the Tilton, but... So East Paddock, that's in the Ray Hobber and Main Stand, isn't it? It would be, yeah. Um, uh, down by the uh, disability. Thing. Yes. yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, down by the, the the scoreboard. Yeah. 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 However, the only other possibility, which I think WMP were having a discussion with a couple of people on Twitter, is having them in the cop hmm. by the Gilmerich, so. Um, they could still access the away car park. Yeah. A rejig of the car park could be done. Um, you know, you wouldn't be able to get into the uh, you know, the, the entrance to the Gilmerick where the away fans currently are. So does could that always be? Does that spill out into the away car park then? Which no. in the cop corner? Not no. currently. No. Not currently. No. <laughs> it's only fenced. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, it would be a very it would be a very simple, very cheap Quick thing things. to sort out. Um, uh, you know, so that so that w- might be a possibility. Um, you know, obviously you've got the lower and the upper block. You've got block thirty nine. Don't know how many they hold, you know, exactly. But obviously, block thirty nine are always the last to be sold anyway. Mm. So that very rarely, unless it's a sell out, that very rarely gets sold. Um, you know, so it's a. I think that's a possibility, and then and then you'd be able to get the the whole of the Gilmerick. But again. Do you want the whole of the Gilmerick lower? Would we, sell? Would we fill it? If you've got, if you've got, if we were, if you've got eighteen, yes. nineteen thousand crowds, mm. the the if you've got the whole of that Gilmerick lower, it looks it looks a little bit silly. Mm. Um, unless unless you want it to become a second Tilton and yeah. and everybody moves from the paddocks to the Gilmerick, if you've got the whole of the stand beyond the goal again, but yeah, um, either way. I don't think it's a it's a massive ne- necessity to look at it right now. I think for these big matches, we have, I mean, the big matches, I think it'd be great. I think it'd be great for atmosphere. To stick the um, way fans in the cop and have a lower lower gun. Yeah, I think it'd be great. If you if you can sell it out, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then As I say, yeah, it'll only work. Absolutely. It'll only work for big matches. Absolutely, big yeah. yeah. Or or if you're in the Premier League, yeah. Mm. Uh, my sister, I'm not sure what I've missed, but uh, can I say this is not football related? Can you blokes please? Talk to each other. Today we have lost one of my favourites, Keith Flint. Talk to each other. Thank you. SOTV. <laughs> Keith Flint, uh, lead singer of the Prodigy. Prodigy yeah, yeah, was yeah. Uh, found sadly passed away this morning. Mm. Mm, not good. Yeah. Not good. Uh, <clears throat> right, uh, Aaron Geller's not much between us and them on the Cop Gilmerick corner. So behave if you're not if you're over there. Yeah, too right, mate. Just behave anyway. Let's make this an occasion, a proper. A proper yeah. St Andrews occasion. Like, put don't, put don't your need any put your nervous energy into into making it loud, and you know, as I say, hurl a hurl a bit of th- a few swear words at yeah, their players yeah. and make it make life difficult yeah. for them. But mm. don't, Lucy, don't Lu- Lucy Williams, the whole of St Andrews will be rocking with the singing. We need to drown out the vile fans. We certainly do, Lucy, and you are partly responsible for doing so. Yeah. Thanks to you, Lucy. Unfortunately, it's always the away supporters that tend to make the noise at St yeah. Andrews, isn't it? Yeah. Depend it entirely depends what the score is. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. also a big point. If it's two 0 them after ten minutes, then yeah, I'm not being funny. I'm not making much noise in my. I've got my head in my hands, but you know. Yeah. Mm. Uh, does does can we do something on the ground on three minutes to recognise the three stabbing murders in the city in recent times? It would be good to hold a silent demonstration for three minutes to show our government we are not happy. It's That's not just Birmingham that has the problem. It? It's uh, you know sadly creeping out, and uh, I think there's been five in the last week or something. Yeah, five yeah. minutes has lost the lives of three three nine. Eleven five. since Christmas or something. Um, what governments can do about it, I don't really know. It's very difficult when the police resources are so okay. thin. And I know this is not blues related specifically, but we know that it's happened in Borsley Green. Um, just left last week, uh, obviously very close to the Blues Ground. So mm. yeah, it's something that it's something. Well, I don't know. I don't know. How do you cure it? How do you cure it? Mm. Exactly. So it's, I'm afraid we'll have to leave uh, that to the moment. No, no, no. Uh, Gary Barnfield just joined. Have we done predictions for Sunday? No, not yet. Gary will be doing those in a few minutes' time. In a few minutes' time. <laughs> Competition time, Mr. Brown. Uh, sure. uh, yeah, okay, yeah. we'll do it now. Yeah, I've got it all ready. 
Okay, so this is the competition for all those people that shared last week. Thank you very much for doing so. And our winner this week could be drawn by yourself, Andrew, if that's yeah. perfectly good, by the way. Yeah. Please don't draw your own name out there, will you? I'm not in it. <laughs> you didn't share it last week? Oh, uh, no, I don't Show him the door. <laughs> Show him the door. <laughs> <clears throat> We'll get there in a minute. Phil. 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 Pick one out. Not that one, not that one. Not that one. Not that one. <laughs> and our winner this week is Lee Harwood. Lee Harwood. Lee Harwood. Okay, Chris Brown will be in touch with you very shortly and a few goodies will be winging its way to you. Well done and thank you for sharing. Thank you. Yeah. Um Mark Adams, will there be a minute silence on Sunday to remember that his promotion hopes? <laughs> Oh, don't say that I before know. the events. <laughs> oh, Lucy's <laughs> <laughs> Lucy could reply with a candlelit vigil for that one, mate. <laughs> oh, no. Actually, on Saturday, they were singing, <coughs> like, we were singing Lee Camp in the middle of our goal, and then one bloke was singing uh, Dean Smith in the middle of the league. So <laughs> I thought that was quite clever. Yeah, that was quite good. Obviously, yeah. it's not. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully, it'll be. Let's that. wait until. Yeah. Let's <laughs> wait until four o'clock on Sunday to start singing that one. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, please. Yeah. 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 Steve Portman says, close the main stand completely, and then you'll fill the GM. Yeah. You're upsetting somebody. Ray. You're upsetting yeah. Ray. You're Steve. upsetting a very valuable member of Birmingham City Football Club there, and and you know the the, the wider talk and talk show, and you know. Mm. Oh, I'm not. I'm not. It's actually stand. a really good view from the top of the main stand. Yeah, it's brilliant because you get to yeah. see the new stand. I went there a couple of times last season. In, yeah, yeah, in it's the, okay. The, in the upper main stand, it's it is a really good view. Not going yeah. With posts, so. yeah. <laughs> but yeah. it is a good view actually, and yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Um, the sound, paddock is the sound resonates view, around it well. And I don't really get why people want to sit in the paddock because it's like being in the front, the front five or six rows of the cop. It's yeah, just like, yeah. It's very difficult yeah. to get the perception of the right way, you know, of play and row, row one. You are almost below ground level, or pitch yeah. level, aren't you? It's it's difficult. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, go for it. Uh, just that dirty word, EFL. Hey. Um, I, I did read what? somewhere today regarding Bolton not being able to get into the training ground. Yeah, yeah. it was closed. Is that true? It was closed? Closed for business today. Oh. What their training ground was. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, why? Um, I, I, and apparently um, a journalist, Alan Nixon, on Twitter... Um, I can't remember his his handle, but um, he w he was saying something like the players have to have been forking out two hundred pound a month each of their own money for uh, the food and catering and things like that at the training ground and things. Wow, what have I done? How the hell are they so funny? funny? But I have to pay to eat at home. I have to pay to eat when I go to work. What's the problem? Do, do you know, there's sometimes there's there's no winning. <laughs> They have, professional have special footballers. They, they have don't special care. Professional footballers. I'm a they professional are employed. Beer drinker. They are employed by that club. <laughs> yeah, it's part of the part of their uh, it's job. Just, isn't it's it? just an well. It, yeah. You know, it's another. It's another tick in the box of, uh, of, of the EFL picking on picking on the wrong people. If you like, you know, for Bolton to go punishment free this season. After the the mess they've put mm. their players and their members of staff, not just the players, you know, the the, the catering staff themselves. If they, you know they, they've, I don't know whether they've asked for the players for the money or the players have come to them and asked for the money to be able to afford food to be able to cook for them and things like that. Yeah. It, it's you know their wages aren't being paid, secretaries' wages aren't being paid on time. Course. Professional footballer can't afford to pay for his own dinner. Nobody's saying that. Huh? Yeah. Nobody's well, saying. Nobody's saying they can't. So I hope, I hope they get. I don't. I hope they're not getting that as a tax-free benefit, a benefit in kind. Who? A, a professional footballer. Food. All it is. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah. No, but they're being paid. They're, they're being. They're, they're being paid their wages. Yeah. Well, they they should be. But they go. They go to work and yeah. they're. Their nutritionists give them what yeah. they need to what they need to eat, and their mm. food is provided to them at the training ground. This is you know it's. I don't know. Yeah. Lost it, mate. 
<laughs> but your you? your job doesn't rely on you being in the best possible condition. Oh yes, and, it does. And neither does mine. Oh yeah, obviously, yeah. obviously. Well, yeah, look yeah. at me. For yeah, sake. look it, at me. It, 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 it tells, doesn't it? But you know, their, their their job relies on them being in the best possible condition they can, and and you but know, which they get wholly paid for. Yeah. <laughs> That's no, not the know. point. That's my point. That's not the point, but it's such a cheap, poor argument to have a go at footballers' wages. Every, it, honestly, it's it's insane to have, a, to have a pop. Mm. Pete Taylor, if every Bolton player was paying 200 quid a month for food, I'd more than happy to knock out a few cheap sandwiches for him. <laughs> Good man, Pete. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Let's all just go out and eat cheese sandwiches. I'm sure that'll do the strength and conditioning good. <laughs> Kev Kelly, FFP and financial news delayed meeting mid March. Shares option issued by BSH to raise money and negate debt to improve the finances after the poor BCFC results for six months, end of December 2018. Mm. Yeah. And and this this was the point I was going to make when you said the dirty word EFL, because the longer this goes on and the more snippets come out about this, it doesn't sound at all like it is the EFL delaying this. This sound this this, this stinks like it's us, like it's our owners, our you know our directors, our board. Who are delaying this at every possible opportunity? But how could we have a conversation the, just on our board? Surely everybody on our it's board. It's not. Would, it's not our board. It, it, w- it would have been the the independent party, right? But whether our directors have turned around and said and, and oh, found right. yes, found a link, got you, got you, got you. found a link where the independent person has a link to either us or somebody closely or somebody uh, a club in the champion let's face it if they're trying to deduct us 12 points mm. if that's their aim 12 points you could probably throw every single team in the championship as somebody with a conflict of interest in our decision because mm. if we get deducted 12 points we're in a relegation battle again mm-hmm. you know so you've got all these people and it, it is sounding a lot more like this is us delaying it not them ok does does it is it true that the FL have done a U-turn or are going to award us 12 points and allow us to sign 6 players outside the transfer window just to show they're not corrupt well let's see <laughs> let's wait and see shall we I'll take like it, it I'll take it Yeah. great sense of humour mate keep it up keep it up yes but this could go on into next season now couldn't it well obviously you don't know what to believe you or you read different things and hear different things on the radio WM obviously I'm, uh, it's a dirty word S- like but I tend to switch listen FM to like, 107.5 the, uh, celebrity by the way while I'm, Andrew, trying, yeah. while I'm cooking the <laughs> tea <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately now Tom Moss has kind of said yeah, he's tired yeah. it's the only real option isn't it to kind of hear it fellow blues fans sometimes on the radio very occasionally fellow very occasional yeah which is what I thought there weren't any on tonight believe me no there wasn't and they're obviously talking about Jack Greenish quite a bit weren't they oh, well, I think um, up greasy G. it's as if, as if the, <laughs> I feel like WM mentioned it because they kind of want it to happen just because they're obviously majority villa and yeah. balls, aren't they but yeah. I mean I was obviously talking to someone last week who said that they heard from the chairman that it was most likely going to be 12 points this season We've got the chance to appeal it. If we appeal it, obviously it won't come off this season. Mm. But then, if we get if the appeal is turned down, I think like we don't we know we're not successful with our appeal. Apparently, it's going to go to eighteen points, and we would start next season on minus eighteen. So yeah. they reckon that it came out of that. They were talking to. Um, is he the chairman? I don't get what Ren. Ren. Is yeah. He the cha- yeah, I think so, he's the. Yeah. Yeah. He's so the he was head at that. He life. was at that sleepover the other week. Yeah. He asked him at that point, and apparently that's what he said. Yeah, I'd rather take it this season personally. Well, you would, but you know, my unless decision. unless you're sixth place, unless they well, actually genuinely think that we could go up. That now, if that is the risk that they are taking, that that you know, they it's pretty clear that they believe in their own hype, and they are more than willing to take risks. They appointed Harry Redknapp. You know, they gave him all this money to spend. Um, they they come across as risk takers. Now, if we are if we beat them on, you know, if we go on another run now of five games where we win three, draw one, and we're still in with a shout come this meeting, yeah. <clears throat> you know, don't be surprised to see it delayed again. Don't be surprised to see us appeal everything we can in the hope. In just just on the off chance that we that we go up, 
They would just like us, wouldn't it? And the, the, <laughs> they would. And then they they turn around and say Nothing it was do. all worth it. Well, apparently, if we do go up, they they also said that apparently if we do go up, it's it will fine, just be a fine. Yeah. So obviously, yeah. when you're getting a hundred million or whatever it is for getting promoted, I'll take any fine. Yeah. You yeah. take yeah, you take a hundred and one million yeah. fine. Yeah. You yeah. Get Steve, the Steve Portman says I'm happy with the FL meeting being held back. Uh, I can see both arguments to it now, and I didn't I didn't get this one the other week when we were talking about it. But yeah, I've, 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 I've it's like clicked more and more. Yeah, now. but. And obviously, from a fan's perspective, what you don't want, and, and and this is the other side of things, we've lost at Hull. If we then go on a five-game streak where we drew, where we draw one and lose four, mm. and then we get hit with a twelve-point deduction, and we really are in a relegation battle, those mm. players, the players' mentality has gone from pressure off all season. Just go out and do what you can. Go out and express yourself. Enjoy your football. You know, picking up wins, scoring goals on in the top half of the table, predominantly for this season, to overnight you're fighting relegation again, which you have done for the last three seasons. Mm. You know, go and, and save us. Some difficult games. Go and up. save us again. And I think we've got Leeds, Sheffield United in April. Albion, um, obviously, Albion coming up. Yeah, and West Brom away yeah, so and things. So, you, you know, you can look at it both both sides of the both sides of the spectrum. But this is why this is why I start you know I start thinking and that it is more likely to be direct that our directors who are making this decision to delay mm-hmm. um, you know to try and put things off because because they're they're gamblers they're risk takers mm-hmm. and the same people <laughs> that obviously decided to go ahead and sign Pedersen knowing that they were they knew, they knew they knew what would happen interesting they message still here from Dave Toyne he said I've googled Bolton Wanderers uh, you can have Greater Manchester Police to the cash strap club's growing number of creditors Wanderers are in the High Court on March 20th over a £1 million plus tax and VAT bill and also owe a seven figure fee to Bolton Council for unpaid business rates yeah right. yeah they're, they're, they're a joke their owner is a joke um, and, but nothing, nothing will be done, and he'll turn around and say that he's trying to sell the club, um, and he'll be trying to sell the club to the highest bidder for the next couple of years, unless, unless they turn around and put him in administration, and and they're gone then, aren't they? You know, they they really are. I think they'll, I think they're gone anyway. I think they'll go down this year anyway. But um, you know, it's it's a really difficult one. Um, the, owners like that are the type of people that the EFL should be clamping down on. Not, you know, yes, us because we've done wrong. I'm, I'm not saying we haven't done wrong. We have done wrong. Yeah. yeah. And if it's a twelve point deduction, that 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 is the adequate punishment. Then so be it. But sort Bol- sort the Boltons of the world out because that's where that's where football's dying. Mm. Those sorts of owners. Uh, Ray, the Vile have issued their figures and they look a lot worse than Blues. Did you see them the other day? Yeah, it, it, and it will be awful. But what I've said to a, a, a number of people, they they won't go out and sign somebody whilst they are... Yeah. I'm almost certain they'll be under a soft embargo. But what will happen is their, their mega rich owners will be able to turn around to the AFL and say, look what we're doing to bring money in. We're going to sell Grealish. We're gonna. We haven't got. We won't keep Abraham on eighty grand a week. Yeah, you know, we won't keep this player on eighty grand a week because he's going back out on loan. And we'll rebuild and we'll we'll keep to a, a relatively low minimum wage. You know, and um, this will happen and this will happen. And the EFL will probably turn around and say, yeah, that sounds fine. So right. they'll be under a soft embargo for about a month and a half until the until the EFL are happy. That they're doing, that making the right steps to bring money in, and they'll line all their deals up, and they'll wait until they're out of the embargo, and then they'll smash them all in the last week. Yeah, Kev Kelly, Queenspot Rangers, Bournemouth, Brighton, all delayed there, and threw lawyers at it for two to three years, and ended up all ended up promoted and just got fines, and then paying the fines over a negotiated ten-year term. Yeah. So. And that's that's the risk that people will take, and those three examples. So those three examples happen. You can sort of understand why Blues are doing it. Mm, yeah. If those are doing it and they've mm. successfully got themselves out of it, why not take the risk? Because look at the reward. Look at the reward for getting promoted. Yeah. Give us any fine you want. We're getting a hundred and seventy million pound for every season we're in the Premier League. Even if we're in it for one, we'll come back down, and we've got. We we're made for ten years. 
Because then you've got your three years parachute money as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the biggest prize. Uh, Warren was a Stalin. Uh, who believes we will be in the playoffs at the end of the season? I don't personally. Someone's going to make heart it or play. head, <laughs> and and heart on head, heart or head, and EFL decision yeah, or no yeah. EFL, de- EFL decision. I think because go on, sorry. No, yeah. sorry. I, I, I don't want to get my hopes up and think that we could make the top six and then obviously get the points deduction. Mm. I think obviously if it was a normal season and this wasn't looming or hanging over us. I'd be quite confident, I think, of us getting into the playoffs. Mm. And you look at like Fulham last season, the way they kind of made, you know, had that run. Then you have to take into account this number of players we've got. And obviously, yeah. like you said before, you know they're kind of going to be running on empty come sort of March, April, obviously now. Yeah. So probably not. I think probably I'd say a top ten finish is is success, isn't it? Considering where we were oh, this time last year, ridiculously so, successful. Um, it must be the first year for years and years and years where Blues fans are thinking. It doesn't really matter. The three out, three out of the last four, they've gone to the last die. Yeah. So if we're anywhere near top half, it's a ridiculously successful season, mm-hmm. considering the restraints we've had on put on signings. Um, you know, the, playing the same team week in week out. Um, if there if there is no point deduction between now and the end of the season, there is no reason why we can't make that top six. Yeah, you know, we are we are a side. Yeah that have shown We're this season that we are yeah, capable yeah. of going on a six game run where we win four, draw one, lose one. Now, if we do that twice for the next remaining 12, 11, 12 games, yeah. we we have a real good chance of finishing that top six. And then Christ knows with the playoffs, you know, any, anything is possible. Hmm. But realistically, <clears throat> only, really, blue, only Blues though could ever be in a position where we could make the playoffs yes. or we could be worrying about relegation yeah, like, yeah, in the same like, season. In yeah. the same season. On the last day of the yeah. season. Yeah. Start, <laughs> you know, we're about to go into a derby uh, on the 9th of March. You know, On the 10th of March, we will go in, be going into a derby, four points outside the playoffs, and we're seriously worried about being in a relegation yeah. battle. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You could only have what a club. City. What a club. It could never happen elsewhere. Steve Portman, if the Pedersen deal was a big issue, as reported, Robert, would the FL really have allowed us to continue with the signing? Look at Keefton Derby. Hmm, interesting. And Paul Hipkiss says, Andrew, when was your first game and how long have you been a season ticket holder? I'm not a season ticket holder at the moment. I've got a three and a half year old son and have him kind of every other weekend. So I can't really commit to the games. And uh-huh. I took him to his first game this season. Kind of ended up spending more time kicking the chair in front than watching the football. Yeah. So he's kind of a bit young for it. When, he's, when he probably hits about five, I'll probably get him... Because you get a free season ticket anyway for kids, don't you? So, yeah. Yeah, so I have been, age, a se- yeah, yeah. so I have been a season ticket holder, um, you know, for, for for years before. But this is not really; it doesn't really fit in with my plans. But my first game uh, was it was Crystal Palace. I sat in the paddock. I want to go say slang in the paddock. Off yeah. My dad took us it's in where the paddock. It all started, I think it, yeah. In the Ray those, Hobro main stand, yeah. please. So they. Um, I think those were the days where you, you, your dad took you and he slipped the uh, the guy on the turnstile like a tenner and he let all three of you in, sort of thing. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, it doesn't happen these days. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. Not with the scanners. Not with the scanners. No, yeah, so yeah. I think it was, uh, it was probably um, 88, 1988, something like that. I think we played Crystal Palace in the Cup and it was a one-all draw. Um, but yeah, as soon as I went, I got the bug and then... My life's been a misery ever since. <laughs> Apart from one great day in 2011. Yeah. <laughs> so you didn't do the Leyland Daft Cup final then? No, no, that was slightly. So, yeah. Was that what year was that? 91. Oh, 91, yeah. No, yeah. I, no, I wasn't really going Too enough young, at that yeah. point, and yeah, we didn't. You still had your marbles did. at that point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't realise what I was letting myself. This, that's another thing. That's when I lost like, You know, yeah. for, for, for when you have children, I've often had this conversation with people. Obviously, I've got a three and a half year old. He had his first kid at Christmas just gone. But serious question: you know, Do you? I know, like you were talk, talking before about generations and generations, but you know, it's. It's a bit of a life to be bestow upon him, isn't it? You know, becoming a blue nose. I mean, it's brilliant though. It is. It is. And yeah. obviously, I would. So love, then take him. I would love nothing more. I'm, you know, I've got an older brother. He's lad seventeen now, and <clears> you know they go to the match every week. They're both season ticket holders in the Tilton Road. You know, and I would love nothing more than to have that with my son yes. when he's when he's that age. Yeah, but you know, it's mm. he's he's going to go through some times, isn't he? Obviously, being a blues fan. But I guess that's what it is, isn't yeah. it? You know, of course. Well, Lindsay, listen to this. I will be there with my son 
and my granddaughter. Yeah. Three yeah. generations. Yeah. There you go. And uh, Ask Grushy H is seven. Fila. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, happy birthday to Ava for Wednesday. She will be eight on Wednesday. Happy birthday to Ava. Happy birthday. Wednesday. Mm. Interesting one from Craig Carlos Booker. Um, go up. I, I assume this is a, you know, a, a, a moral debate, really, which you know, I've heard a couple of times on, on WM as well. Go up and week in, week out, be disheartened. Come on. Like, so is it, I assume he's saying, would you really want, would you really want that? Yeah. Would you really want to go up and be battered by Liverpool and Spurs? Yeah, just to, And the honest answer just, is, just to stick two oh, fingers bloody up. course just you would. Just to stick two fingers up to the AFL. Yeah, Honestly, yeah. absolutely <laughs> you would. And you look at the Premier League now, that is no great league. You you will get battered by somebody, by a Chelsea or a Liverpool yeah, or a Spurs. Yeah, you will. Yeah. That's that, you know, that will happen. But you've also got, 11 absolutely average. bang yeah. average teams in that division yeah, yeah. you know game, Cardiff are still in with a chance of staying up that side is woeful mm. you know and, and honestly it's yeah. you, the, the financial reward of being in that division and I think uh, you look at the the championship 20, to, 20 of the 24 teams could get promoted from the championship and every one of them would stand a chance in that Premier League of staying up. Mm. And and my God, the reward is ridiculous. So if you if you turn it down just because you're going to get beat four by Spurs one weekend, then mm-hmm. nah, you're mad. The financial rewards alone are enough, aren't they? Like, yeah. Regardless of how you do. If, you know. Huddersfield... Huddersfield are going down with an absolute whimper this season and they're an awful, awful side. Mm. They've spent two years in the Premier League. Mm. They are they are done. Minted. That is that is them done. <clears throat> you know? Yeah. Because because they'll be able to reinvest that money. They'll never have, they'll, they won't have a EFL <laughs> problem unless they just go and spend five hundred million. You know, as you say, they're, they're done now. They are they're done. done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Aaron Gellers, let's just go up. Let everybody, players and fans on board, know that that is our intention. Keep right on. Stephen Gill would take the points deduction now, sick and tired of the situation. Mm, it, the side but you can also, you, like can, tonight, you can absolutely see that side of it where you just want to know now. Mm. You, you, you know, as a, as a supporter, I'm sure the players and management as well. I'm sure they'd rather just know the situation. What are they playing for? Yeah. You know, how how much have they how much mm-hmm. have they got left to play with in terms of points and things like that? But um, while you are still mathematically and Fee- feasibly with the way we're playing still in with a shout you can see why they if it is them you know I'm not I don't know I'm you know I'm hypothesizing that it is us delaying but if it is you can see why mm. crazy 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 blues never do things the easy way playoffs here we come Mike Knight <laughs> that'd be great wouldn't it wouldn't it be great hundreds upon hundreds of comments thanks ever so much do keep on coming not remotely possible to read each and every single one of them out but we try our best to look at them and uh, and keep up to date with what you guys are thinking at that another um, really good point from Ray talking about getting promoted um, an away day at Hull or a Sheffield Wednesday where you get charged 40 quid for a ticket yeah, or, 20, or going yeah. to Man United where it's 20, capped at 25 or whatever it is 20, 20 to 20, 20, 20 is it oh, well, 20 yeah. quid, I think somebody will say yeah, yeah. yeah but it I, I certainly don't think it's over 25, 30 yeah. quid and That's you're great. going to Old Trafford the new yeah. Spurs stadium that looks amazing the oh, Emirates oh god doesn't yeah. look good or Sheffield yeah. for 50 quid nah you're alright thanks uh, Paul Hook gives Monk would make us competitive in the Premiership I have confidence I'm sure he would I'm yeah sure he imagine would. what he could do with a little bit of money to spend yeah Kev Kelly you promotion and get battered week in week out yes 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 just for the financial package to sort the club well yeah but um, but the the point is I don't think you would get battered week in <laughs> week out you'd get the odd battering but I don't think it would be week in week out by any stretch of the imagination mm. does does I'd like to go up for a season break the CFI cycle get parachute payments etc if we don't cut it attract big spenders I'll have it all day long. And of course, what you should get is um, full stadium. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah you would, yeah. yeah. And all that noise and buzz and atmosphere back again, you yeah. know, proper, right from the off. Yeah. Might be able to keep Chai as well for another six months. Yeah, James Wright. Titch, even if we lost all games, it means financial security for years after I'd take it. Yeah. So the comments are pretty similar to yours, mister. Yeah, I think you have to, yeah. I think... You'd, change, you'd, it? Be, you'd be crazy to turn it down. <laughs> Paul Gill would rather go up and have one season where we're Premier and the scum aren't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, imagine that. Went, you know, the last time that happened would have been a long time ago. It so. would have been in the 70s, wouldn't it? I would imagine, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they've been, the yeah. been top tier for a long time. Because I remember them being in Division 3, the old Division 3. Right. Yeah. Did they go? They, did they go down for a little while after they won the European I Cup in the mid eighties? But didn't, didn't really take any notice. They've been. Yeah. They've been. In, did they win the European Cup in the eighties? I think some I think so, yeah. really? around the eighties. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. They haven't mentioned it. No, I've they, seen they, some they, old news They, they, they like to keep it on the low. Yeah. Yeah. I think I've read they don't talk the about it much they don't talk in the history of performance. It's in black and white anyway. Adrian Glenn says being in the Premier would also attract new owners. There's literally no what negative to being in the Prem. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 If you want new owners. I mean, obviously, the, the current owners are fundamentally a holding company still, so yeah. they, they would want to get rid if the price was right. Mm. But what what a better opportunity to sell up than if you're a Premier mm. League club. Exactly, exactly. Mm. Uh, remember when Blues were smashing Crystal Palace 4 0? Look at, now look at Palace. A club can transform so quickly in such a short amount of time being in the Premier. Yeah. Adrian Glenn. I think that a couple of seasons before that, it wasn't long before that, that they were playing. Um, uh, a, a last day survival game at Sheffield Wednesday I think it was and they won at Sheffield Wednesday um, on the last day to, you know, to stop them dropping into the League One it w- which it would have been then oh, and look at them now oh, my knee. <laughs> <laughs> look at them now they yeah, they, they could have cracked like Nick's knee then. I thought you dropped yeah. your wallet and Dave Twine I don't know uh, whether this is factual or not Vials operating losses 2015 26.6 million 2016 81.3 million 2017 14.5 total 121 and I believe they're allowed to lose 69 yeah so the yeah, but that that their sort of figures will be the same as a lot of teams in the division and and as far as I'm aware the punishment for that is a soft embargo until you can prove that you're doing the right things to get yourself out of it Mm. don't go and buy somebody when you're under that soft embargo that's my advice yeah and uh, Mark Adams says imagine the scramble for away tickets <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, if you think you're struggling now yeah and races who cares away days are away days mm-hmm. yeah being in the Prem would attract new owners yep there's literally no negative being, to being in the Prem Adrian Glenn and would you do 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 yeah but, yeah full on there's another one yeah, I mean, for, for Fulham, I've, it looks like they're going to go down this season, but you know, we we beat them 3-1 comfortably on the last day of last season. And Alan Minnick, what about the last time we came down and look at us now? Well, when we came down, the circumstances were completely and utterly different. We'd yeah. just come off the back of the Carling Cup final. Yeah. The euphoria was around the city, um, but what we didn't know was that the owner was at that time corrupt. Yeah, and, as supporters. and another big difference is that was eight years ago. Yes, and the prize for being a Premier League club has almost doubled <clears> in that time. <throat> mm. So you're, you're coming down with a hell of a lot more parachute payments than we did eight years ago. Uh, Dozen wants to know if we went up, do you think we'd still get chips in the Tilton? <laughs> well, I'd like to think so, Dozen. <laughs> Might be able to do something with that main stand as well. Uh, the Ray Hobra main stand. Knock it is. bloody down, <laughs> God's sake. It's a carbuncle. Uh, right, uh, Mark Adams, if we went up, fast pay Q would have crushed velvet carpet. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what? I love it. Do you actually use... I know you've spoken about it before, but do you use fast pay? Yeah, I yeah. Fast pay. I don't know. I absolutely no. love it. I don't do. It's just like, you just try it to the front. It's as if like no one else has ever worked out how to use it. You're yeah. the only one, and you feel like you're kind of... Some yeah. kind of technical... But do you know what makes me laugh? The, the people... Whenever it's whenever it's plugged, whenever it's advertised, and the people who say, can't you just get contactless? Mm, mm. I really hate to do this to people, but it is... That is exactly what it is. It is contactless payment. You top your card up, and they 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 tap your card, 
I need a season ticket. You could leave your wallet at home. Just bring your season ticket to a game. Do you have to have a, a season ticket, or can you just have a fast pay card? Well, no. You, yeah, if you, you haven't, if you haven't got a season card. ticket, you can oh. get the card got, yeah, got to, that's, to that's load it up and top it up. Yeah. yeah. I've said that. Hull actually, Hull on Saturday had contactless, which was oh, really good. Yeah. And um, like it was all just barcode to get in. There was no like people in the turnstiles. Yeah, yeah, Contactless, yeah. Wi-Fi in the stadium. Obviously, it's KCOM Stadium, so that's obviously a communication club. Yeah, yeah. Literally, I was that, sat in yeah. the seat connected to the Wi Fi. Yeah. Um, contactless payment. I mean, it should be like that, really. At, it's at pretty good. Grand, yeah. It be these to be fair, fair, yeah, Wi Fi at most grounds should be should be easy enough to Standard. sort out, shouldn't it, to mm. be yeah. fair? But, yeah. Especially in the top two divisions. Yes. Before we go to predictions, winner of the three word review Thank you. is John Pat Vince Rathbone. And with. Win next game. Whoa, that's all we need to do. Simple. Win next game. So that's it, isn't it? Mm. Well yeah. done. Get in touch and you got a prize on the uh, line. Nigel Mann is finding the irony that Andrew Cash uses fast pie. <laughs> 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 which, which is a fair enough point to make. It is a fair point, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, just to confirm that Chris actually isn't wearing claret and blue, that is a black. Uh, it? it just it just looks it look, looks a little no it does under the light it does under the light a little bit but it, I can confirm oh, no, that it is he's, definitely black it's black isn't it it is yeah, definitely so black black are we doing a tilt and talk uh, show away day at Preston oh. hmm. how drunk could I possibly well, I get I will there? be going <laughs> to Preston <laughs> mm-hmm. a party <laughs> what do you 12 I'm, tr- I'm trying to get out of here it's jelly <laughs> and ice cream. Well, uh, now you mentioned the jelly and ice cream. Really. Uh, for the next couple of minutes, Kev Kelly wanted to do your first game. His was um, Norwich, March 71. Kevin Kelly. Uh, Kevin French, beg your pardon. So mine was 10th of December 1973 against Newcastle. In the, I think it was the Toto Cup. Wow. Or one of that. It would have been. That was the Texaco Cup. Was it the Texaco Cup? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Good knowledge. I was all, there. All I remember was I was absolutely cacking myself. Yeah. I've never, I've, I mean, never seen so many people. Mm. First time I'd ever been. It was. It was. Yeah. But you fell in love that day there and then. Not then. Yeah. Mm. I don't remember my first home game. I remember my first away game was Bolton at Burnden Park. So it was before the Reebok. Um, <clears throat> But yeah, Paul Gill wants to. Sorry, nineties. Paul Gill wants to know what was the winning Karen Steve Bruce picture quote. We didn't that have one, one because one. you're all disgusting. No, that one's <laughs> our friend Lee Harris won it. You all got and a filthy cup. minds. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I, I was disgusted oh, reading everything. I picked one. a normal one this week. Yeah, it was pretty <laughs> good. Yeah, which I can't remember. <laughs> uh, currently, nil nil Sheffield Derby. Not Sheffield versus Derby in the Sheffield yeah. Derby. Yeah. And apparently fierce, it's a really drab The fierce Derby. Sheffield Derby wow. where rivalry is so intense you can play it on a Monday night. Yeah, yeah. What, were you, what were your thoughts on the um, Liverpool-Everton Derby? I didn't right. watch it. I fell asleep, I didn't. Live didn't, didn't up last 20 minutes or so. Didn't watch any of it. There was about as much Liverpool passion in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, you know, Ever- Everton's fans made it Made it pretty loud. They were pretty good in the last twenty minutes or so, trying to mm. uh, as Everton pushed for a, a bit of a winner. But obviously, it's, it's not a patch, is it? On the last, but no, no, no. Okay, um, predictions for Sunday then, please. Oh, <laughs> I think Andrew should go first, as is the guest. You're passing the book. I am. All right. I'm. I'm biding my time. <laughs> Head says one one. Heart would obviously like us to win, but yeah, I think just uh, yeah, I, I probably would take one one to be honest at this point. Tony Grogan's going one one Sunday score one one on red cards for Tony Grogan too. Eh. Ray Nash is going two two. I was going to uh, go. I'm just giving you a little bit of extra time to think here. No, well, I, I genuinely <laughs> was going to go one one. Yeah. Um, <sighs> yeah. Oh, go on then. We'll we'll nick it. 2-1 Blues. Mark Adams, 2-1 Blues, 3-1 Villa, Pete Taylor. Oh, Pete. Uh, Pete. Lindsay Phillips, 3-1 to the Blues, 2-1 oh, to the Blues oh, from yeah. Ray 
the main stand Hobro. 6 1 to Blues from Adrian. I think that's Hello, just Luke. slightly optimistic. 2 2 that. from Stephen Gill. Ian Clayton's also going 2 2. And Stephen Gill. Um, Ormer 1 2 2 1 Blues, Dean Williams and Nigel Mann 2 2. Awful Thanks lot of draws yeah. coming in. So yeah. I wonder how that would have differed if they'd have. If we'd have got a point at Hall and they'd have, they'd have drew or lost on Saturday, yeah. how many people would be saying we'll nick it? And now, you know, after one, after two results on the same weekend, we, we're going more draws than than wins. But mm-hmm. it is crazy how just one, like you say, one weekend has swung it in yeah. such a fashion. Because if they'd have lost on Saturday, I was driving up to Hall as I say, talking to my nephew, thinking like, if, if Villa lose today, like. You know, people have been ringing up calling for these to go knees, already, aren't they? Yeah, and they'll be going knees, into the yeah. derby absolutely petrified. But it, to me, it doesn't mean anything. It's a derby it's, is a derby. It's an individual game, and yeah. just, mm. form goes out the window, doesn't it? So and it's funny because if they'd have lost on Saturday, that's exactly what they'd have been saying. They'd have been saying, "Forget what's gone. It's a derby yeah. game." You know, the old proverbial form goes out the window. Um, Wish somebody had shut that window so the form would stay in it sometimes. But yeah, um, so it it's it works both ways. You know, they they would have been saying it at this point last week, and now it's us saying it because because of one weekend. So you know, let, let's let's remember let's remember the good things we've done this season, and and you know, let's, let's like you said, like usually after a defeat, we kind of do bounce back. Don't we? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Paul Hipkiss 2 0 Blues, it's our time. 3 2 Blues, that one was from. Yeah, uh, thank you very much indeed. Yeah, it was. Thank you very much. It's just flying up there. Okay, for the last 15 minutes today, we are going to do anything to do with footballers, word associated with vegetables. I'll start you off with Paul Tater. <laughs> <laughs> so you get a head start. You you sorry, you get a head start, don't you? Well, because you know yeah, what you're going to yeah, say. Yeah, because I know what I'm going to say. So we already get one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. Paul Taylor. Oh, I very nearly went back on my words and not reacted to any of them. Obviously, yeah. Robbie Cabbage. Robbie Cabbage. Robbie there you Cabbage. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Take that one, Paul Franks. Yeah. <laughs> is he still doing them? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Steve Cabbage. We've got Steve Cabbage coming through. <laughs> David Celery. It's <laughs> good. It's like good. Like good. Yeah, I like that one. Did you say football players though? Uh, footballers. Yeah. Footballers. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Terry vegetable. Oh. <laughs> Come on. Come Lee on. Camp. Stay, stay focused, Chris. Stay focused. <laughs> Lee Camp's good. Yeah. Terry vegetable. Oh, yeah. Stay focused, Chris. <laughs> Best thing I've heard all night. You're desperate to say what are you? You're just desperate to say one. Uh, Gavin Mark BCFC is going three one to the Blues. Um, Tony, shut your face, Leighton. Aston Cabbage. <laughs> Gary, uh, Fry up, like Gary Garden one. Peas. Gary Fry up. That's nothing to do with vegetables. Radish Jardy. Oh, that's a good. One. You can fry vegetables. Declan Spud. We got Health. Dean Gherkin. <laughs> I'm trying to think of vegetables and anything. Cool, then what was your suggestion? Just try, just look, it's, it's the week before the big one. Just do one. I wasn't going to do one. Oh, I've right. just got lots of questions about all of the ones I've heard. I'm I'm really struggling. To f- David Celery, who's that supposed to it's be? A referee, isn't it? David, David Ellery's yeah, yeah. a referee. Yeah, that's I, not I know, a footballer. It's funny. Yeah. It was funny. Yeah. It's not funny. No, I mean, none of them are funny. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's the most important thing to <laughs> realise here. Artichoke <laughs> Gamble. Artichoke Gamble. Artichoke <laughs> Gamble. Harley Bean. Harley Bean's got to good like that, man. <laughs> I don't think Jasper Carrot counts, does it really? Because that is his name. Because he's not a footballer. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know the, the the game which you play where you have to name a footballer? <laughs> Can you give Kevin Tomlinson a shout out as he's doing a walk from the Hawthorns to Birmingham City on the 30th of March to raise money for the Justice for the 21 charity? Cheers and keep right on. Oh, is that for, yeah, for on the day of the game? Right, is it? For 21, yeah, yeah. 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 Tomato Kuzak. Broccoli Madsen. Jot of chocolate. <laughs> I, knew that was, I knew that was going to come. Tomato Sorensen. Adam Wilkes will be on there. Yeah, surprised he hasn't been already. Surprised he hasn't been already. He's like. He does, he, he I think he's copyrighted that, doesn't he? So. Ray Clementine, I think you'll find that's a fruit, not a vegetable. Still, still struggling. 
Marin Fellaini. I like that one. That's good. <laughs> Brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. Honestly. They're probably Googling these. Aren't they? Oh dear. <laughs> oh dear me, dear me, dear me. It's no wonder we didn't win that award last season. How do you <laughs> I mean, really? I think I think we've got it. I think we've got it in the bags. Too. For an hour and fifteen minutes, they thought this is the greatest thing I've ever heard, and then the last fifteen minutes. But we've we've only been doing that this season. And we lost to Arsenal. That's not the point. I'm trying to make a funny joke here. About oh, right, that. okay. <laughs> Beat Troopman. Ooh, Bert Troopman. I like that one. Yeah, and and um, on that announcement, on that uh, subject as well, there will be an announcement this Thursday. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, that's all I'm going to say. That's what you're going to say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Please together, look yeah. out because we need your help. We need you. We definitely need help. Yes. But we also need you. Yes. No, not you. All right. Okay. You. We need. Yes, we need you. <clears throat> Your tilt on talk show needs you. Yeah. We need you. Yeah. All right, okay, Kev Kelly, Nick, can you mention John and Dave Williams season ticket holders for years and at 50 years old, both doing the London Marathon for bowel, bowel cancer and men cap, aiming for sub three and a half hours. Wow, that is incredible. That's incredible. a good effort. Excellent. Well done, well done, guys. Yeah, well done. Um, I used to do marathons and what? And they changed the name to Snickers. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> You can see what oh <laughs> goodness me! It's so it's so easy, and, and the cross is put in, and Andrew just side foots it home. <laughs> Jeff Horseradish. That comes up every week, even when it's not food. Tim <laughs> Yeah, football <laughs> to do with buildings. <laughs> yeah, fourth round. <laughs> well, it used to be a building. Yeah, there's a yeah. jot of chocolate one. Yeah. There's, Jeff there's one. always jot of chocolate. Yeah. There's always Jeff horseradish. <laughs> and there's always a joke about the Royal Highness Karen Brady. Yeah. And there's always a cabbage one. Chicken and doy. Somebody's lost the plot here. Louis Donner kebab. <laughs> <laughs> John Spuddy. That's a good one. John Ruddy. John Spuddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Okay, Ray, so just a reminder there's not many numbers left on the Excessive Blues charity raffle competition. I don't think it's a five or a ticket, isn't it? It's five uh, or a ticket, yeah. yeah. Steve, yeah. Steve put it up uh, yeah. earlier on, didn't he, or the other day? Oh, he's yeah. just sent me a link here too. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. Yes, I'm going to copy that straight into there now. Um, Steve put me down for a five on it, matey. I'll. Uh, Sort you out shortly. There we go. There's the link. Good. Ken Leak. You won the lottery. <laughs> what? You won the lottery. <laughs> Mo Salad. Is it a vegetable? Well, it's debatable. No. It's, it's not debatable. It's, it's not it? debatable. You could have carrot, carrots as a vegetable. You could have that. Tomatoes is a fruit. Tomato is a fruit. Mm, mm. uh, is a fruit. So across mm. the line. Maxine Tollifat. Tomato is a fruit, but you wouldn't put it in a fruit salad. Chick, chickpea and doy. Who is Carey? Thank you very much for that. Well done indeed. Oh, my belly. Michael, Michael Marrison. <laughs> um, yes, yes. Andy Coleslaw. Leaker Engelman. That's going to come on, isn't it? I quite like that one, yeah. Leaker Somebody's Engelman. thought about that, haven't they? Leaker Engelman. Because he leaks in. No. No, it's not really. It's, it's a bit too subliminal. Yeah. 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 Oh, right, guys, don't comment. forget, if you're travelling to Blues on Sunday, there are several road closures in force. Now, Get the train. I've to uh, West Midlands Police this morning. They're going to put up on their Twitter and Facebook accounts the maps, again, because I couldn't find yeah. them because I needed them, uh, the maps of wh which roads are closed. Uh, it's all at the back of the GM. Yeah. The GM. Emmeline Street. Emmeline Street and yeah. around those areas there. So please, please, please do have a look and uh, leave in plenty of time on Sunday. Yes. Leave in plenty of time and make some damn noise. Damn noise. I've got to pick an available number between 1 and 59. Okay. Um, send me the photo. How do you know what's gone? I was going to say, Steve, Steve Connolly oh, sends me the photo on here. I'll pick a number. That's quite good, isn't it? Well, it sounds reasonable. Leek Chapman, Ashley Coleslaw, Harry Sugarcane. <laughs> it's a 
it's still not a vegetable. Still not a vegetable. Is it a vegetable? It's not a vegetable. <laughs> Yum, matter. <laughs> Damari gravy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gravy. Beef. Oh, yes, Mr. Yeah, so, so, of course, this month for March, we are supporting uh, the Lilly Foundation. I'm going to try and get this right, which is fighting mitochondrial disease. I think it's mitochondrial. mitochondrial. Is it mitochondrial, mitochondrial disease? Mitochondrial yeah. Disease. Mitochondrial is, is yeah. Um, a cell disease, isn't it? Yeah, um, yeah. Mit- mitochondria is, is like the battery inside the cell, I think, that keeps, right. it, keeps it going. Okay. If I remember from my previous. Mm. And I know, very rarely pay However, what, yeah. we, what, we, what we're going to try and do is uh, get somebody in from the, uh, yeah. the foundation. And, and so we have to yeah, and I do know there's a big yeah. there's a big blues fan whose son uh, suffers from this uh, debilitating debilitating disease. So uh, I hope hope it'd be nice to get her in actually so she can uh, yeah have a chat about it but if you want to know more about it please go to our facebook group page and um, click on the link there and uh, you'll find all about the lily foundation there you go thank you very much which will be for the whole of march the whole of march and also, if you've got a charity that you'd like us to support and mention, then please get in touch with uh, either one or three of us, and we're only too pleased to do so for yeah, you. Yeah, we've got a month left. Hmm? So, get in quick. Uh, no, April and May. May? Oh, yeah, very much May. Yeah. Yeah. A lot. April and May. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Steve Portman. I've just got that, and I'll have a look at it in a second. I'll give you a number. Um, so, we've done Young Matter. Damari Gravy. That really one didn't, didn't work, I'm afraid. Uh, da, 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 da. I think every, I, I'm just Dude. having Declan a quick Rice. look through. It appears everybody's gone completely barmy. Um, no. Honestly, yeah, I'm worried about the population. Maureen, <laughs> the population. Maureen Minute has said roast potato. Now, that technically is a vegetable. Yeah. However, that's really not the game, Maureen. You're supposed to sort of tie it back to a footballer. Um, Unless, of course, she knows somebody with a nickname, roast potato. Right. <laughs> Alan Minute says choo choo pew. Now that that's alarming. That has to be an alarming <clears throat> comment for anybody to make. Um and Ray says I look forward to seeing you all Sunday. So I don't know if Ray's gonna go around the whole ground looking for us and, and shaking and introdu- hand. introducing himself to everybody <laughs> who Hi, turns I'm, up. I'm, I'm, I'm Ray Ray Ray, 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 Ray. Oh, bro. <laughs> no, you just or just welcome people as they go and come into the main stand. Yeah. Oh, okay, yes. Hello, I'm Ray Hello, this is Welcome nice. to my stand. Thanks for joining thanks stand. for joining me today <laughs> in the Ray main <laughs> As Ray Price said, listen, people, it's very, 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 very important. Now, the FA have issued was with a warning. Yeah. No throwing on the pitch on Sunday. Not anything, not even a piece of paper, nothing. Because even a piece of paper is visible on the TV screens Mm. and it could easily be misconstrued. Nothing, zero, nothing. You don't need to throw anything. Why does anybody need to throw anything? Another human being. They don't. They don't. No. Right. So abuse, just don't right? do it. You, you mean like it. a Bristol? Yeah. There's one thing you can throw. Abuse. And that yeah. is foul lots, mouth lots, abuse. Lots of noise and abuse. Yeah. 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 Vicious, horrible swear words, which you wouldn't even dream <laughs> of coming right? out of your mouth normally. You're nasty, even from the Gilmer. Oh yeah. 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 I'm taking my my dad on Sunday. And uh, I know he's just going to be sat there shaking his head at me for the whole game. Yeah. Because like, obviously the language that I'll be coming yeah. out with, he'll just be... I there. couldn't go with anybody who's <laughs> closely related to me anymore. No. No, no. it just gets it far too nasty. Sorry. Do not yeah. throw uh, relatives on the pitch either. <laughs> yeah, that's probably a fair yeah. fair bit of advice, yeah. Because that's just Try stupid. Try not to anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Don't don't please don't please don't. It's a cruel clip. Yeah. yeah that's, that's a serious idea. I know we have a good laugh and a joke, but... And we and are the fed up with these bloody Sticks and stones kickers. may break my bones, but names will hurt the most. <laughs> so make sure you call them nasty people a lot of nasty names on Sunday. I award you the class for that. Because that will that'll get to them, that will. You call them a nasty piece of work and that'll be them rattled. Yeah, Especially Grealish. Yes. They'll be crying. Oh yes. Cheer up yeah. Greasy G. If you think if you think what you're about to shout is far too much, it's not. It's not enough. Give it him. Double it. Yeah. Treble it. <laughs> yeah. Make it even worse. Yeah. Yeah. However, don't get personal. <laughs> no, no. Oh no. You get personal, guys. <laughs> Yes. Oh, what a mad hour and a half that's been. Yeah. Andrew, thanks ever so much for joining us on this 
crazy. Yes, thank, right? you. thank you. And uh, fill in the chair. Your name's on the board now already. So. It, says, it, says, it actually says Andre Cash. Oh, oh, Andre Andre Cash. Somebody, Cash. Somebody's trying to make He's me sound. The w off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's trying to make me sound Honestly. posher than I am, I think. Yeah, yeah. He probably thought you were French when you walked through the door. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. It's probably that baguette I had under my arm. Yeah. <laughs> and the string of onions around your neck. <laughs> and the bicycle you bought in. Apologies to all the French listeners for, uh, for that vicious stereotype. Uh, Going to leave you with this, Gary Williams, 2 on Blues. Ooh, that'll do. I'll do, That'll mate. do, Gary. That'll do. Listen, thanks for being with us. It's been a Monday night. It's been crazy the last 15 minutes, as always. And, um, yeah... We dedicate the show tonight to Linda. Linda Keenan. We do in peace, keep her on. And regards also to Dermot and the rest of the family. Let's do this stronger. Together. Stronger. If the way be long, let your heart be strong. Keep right on wrong. Thanks, Mrs. Brown. And Andrew says, cheers. And Mr. Conference. Take it easy. See you next week, guys. Let's hope for a win.